everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through example for 4.4 mathematical modeling. Um, this is a Google Sheet that I've created for my students. So if you're one of my students, I hope you have this. You've downloaded it and made it a copy. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the question that we have is, does the temperature of the air affect the rate at which a cricket chirps? And so in other words, whenever it gets warmer, do we hear more chirping? When it gets colder, do we hear less chirping? That's the question we're trying to investigate. We have some data here that's been gathered. It has two tables, two columns, excuse me. One is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, and the other is chirps per second. And so whenever we're looking at this, you know, we can look at this all day and try to figure out, like, does the trend exist? Do we notice a data, you know, some, some kind of relationship? Um, humans are very visual creatures. So if we can get this data into, like, a picture format, it might be easier for us to discern the answer to that question of whether they affect each other. So when you're typically asking a question like this, whether one thing affects the other, one common uh, type of graph that we might want to create is called a scatter plot. Very easy to do in Google Sheets. We highlight the data, including the title for each column, and we come up here to insert, and we insert the chart. And it thinks about it and it says, well, you, do you want a column chart? And the answer in this case is no. So I'm going to come over here to column chart. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to scroll down until I find a scatter plot. It's a series of dots. And so what the dots are, and you can tell you right here, the x-axis is represented by the temperature. That's an independent variable in this case. Does the temperature have an effect? Is it, is it a driver for the driven value of chirps per second? Okay, so that's my outcome. My input is the temperature, and the output that I'm interested in is the chirps per second. Okay, pops up with this, and I start to see, man, it starts to look like there's a trend here. Okay, it starts to look as if when the temperature goes up, the number of chirps also goes up. Now we want some, to do some formatting here before we go any farther. So in this first video, all we're going to do is talk about the formatting of this particular chart. So I'm going to change this to say temperature versus chirp per second. That's the first thing. I'm going to come over here to the chart title. I'm going to click on this drop down. Horizontal axis. Let's go ahead and label this horizontal axis. Really what the horizontal axis is, is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So notice I put a label down here. We're going to do the same thing here for the vertical axis. The vertical axis, the y-axis, is the number of chirps per second. That one doesn't really need a label because it's, it's obvious what it is. It's just a number. Okay. A couple other things we're going to do here before we go on then is we're going to collapse that menu. Let's go to Series. And let's go and we're going to add a trend line. So I'm going to click on this box. We're going to scroll down and the label the trend line is going to be the equation. So the label, we're going to choose use equation, and it pops up right here. We can see now that there's a relationship of y equals 0.227x plus a negative 1.02. We're also, before we go any farther, we're going to go to show the r squared value. I don't like how it formats it. I wish I put it on the second line, but you know, it's still we can read it, okay? So it's good enough. One other thing we're going to do here, the only thing I don't like about this graph at this point in time is the fact that this dot is kind of hanging off the edge here, okay? So we can see that the chirps per second is 20. So let's go bump up the vertical axis. So notice I clicked on vertical axis here. And let's change the maximum value to be like 22. And all that's going to do is it's going to make all the dots kind of appear on the graph. We could do the same thing for the, the horizontal axis if you really wanted to move this down. Collapse the vertical axis menu. Expand the horizontal. Let's say the minimum value here, uh, 69 is the minimum, so let's say 68 degrees. And that just kind of moves everything in a little bit. So all sorts of stuff you can do to graph, but hey, you know what? That looks pretty good. We're going to take this now, we're going to take this table, and I just want you to drag it down into the area that I've left you right here. Okay? So that's the end of the first video. You should have your graph formatted. In the next video, we're going to start talking about what is this information that we have here? What are some conclusions, some conclusions that we can draw from this? And we may do this in class today, but I'll make a video later on that you can come back and watch it later to try to, to figure out what you missed, maybe, or if you need help.